All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Roderick Samuels coming to you live from Hair Lab Detroit Barber School Studio in Southgate, Michigan. I can't tell you guys how excited I am to share uh, my knowledge and uh, some of the things that I love about uh, about men's grooming and about clipper cutting. So uh, today's class is also sponsored by Anders Clipper Company. So make sure that you check out all the latest and greatest tools that you can find on the Marlow Beauty website. They got such a wide variety of new and improved tools that will take your men's cutting game to the next level. So uh, again, my name is Roderick Samuels, and uh, and I just wanted to uh, to just kind of share some things with you guys, uh, some some uh, some some tricks on how to build your male clientele. Okay, so the first thing first, uh, make sure that if you're utilizing social media, and if you're not, shame on you right now. You got to utilize social media, people. Social media is social. All right, so make sure that you utilize social media. Show your men's hair. Off. Uh, one of the biggest social media secrets that nobody will ever tell you is that people believe what they see. So if you want to build your main, your men's game up, if you want to do more, you want to get more men inside your chair, start posting really great photos of your men's haircuts. Uh, the second thing I want to do, I want to tell you guys about is to invest in quality tools. Um, the Andes Clipper Company has been around for quite some time now and they make the highest quality tools that you could ever imagine. Um, the good thing about Andes is um, if you have a problem with anything, you get a warranty on your stuff, just like a car. Isn't that amazing? So make sure that you check out all the latest and greatest Andes tools. Make sure that you post great photos on your Instagram, your Facebook. Uh, for some people who use TikTok now, that's kind of where uh, the direction that we're going, but make sure that you utilize all of the resources that we have at our fingertips uh, right now. <clears throat> the other thing is, and we can call this good old fashioned word of mouth, all right? Let people know what you're doing. Let people know that, hey, you know, um, I'm starting to do a lot more men's haircuts. I want to get more men in my chair. Your brothers, your your, your sons, your son's friends, the football team. Um, I actually started off as the kitchen titian back when I was uh, young in the industry and also the bathroom barber. Uh, that quickly came to an end because my mom was saying that I was dirty in her bathroom and that was kind of nasty. So, um, But make sure that you're doing everything that you can um, to, to, to learn more about men's hair cutting. Um, there's great uh, videos all over YouTube and Instagram. Make sure you follow um, the Marlowe Beauty page for continuing your education as well as the Andis Clipper Company page as well to get more uh, education in men's grooming and also cutting. So um, today I'm going to break my segment up into two different different uh, cuts. As you guys can see, um, I believe that being a, a great barber and a, being a great stylist is about diversity. And when you have a client that comes in your chair, regardless of what uh, what ethnic background they may be in, remember we don't cut black hair, we don't cut white hair, we cut texture. So it could be straight, it could be curly, it could be wavy, it could have a loose S pattern, whatever the case may be. Always keep that level of professionalism in mind when you are wanting to attract new clients. So today, um, our first demo um, is going to be on some Afro textured hair and this is actually uh, a mannequin that, that I that I did and, and um, thank you to Pivot Point as well for donating great mannequins so I can give education to the masses. Um, this is a haircut that I did for uh, for one of my other demonstrations for Elevate and as you guys can see really really nice kind of texture here um, really really nice curl pattern in the hair and what I did was I showed some freehand shaping and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of that today as well as some easy steps to fade hair okay remember we cut hair we don't we, don't, we, we cut hair it's, it's, it's what, it, what we do all right so I want to first start off first um, remember, uh, as everything is kind of going on with COVID, we have to make sure that sanitation is not an option, it is a must. Say it with me, sanitation is not an option, it is a must. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to grab us a nice clean towel here. And we want to actually grab us some of this Andis 5-in-1 Cool Care. You can also find this on the Marlowe Beauty site. Um, this is a coolant. It is a disinfectant. It is a rust preventative as well as a cleaner, okay? So today we're going to be using something that's really, really new to uh, the Andis arsenal. And this is the new Andis Nation, um, the Andis Nation uh, 
uh, clipper. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, had a little too much coffee. But this is the Andes Nation NVLI, y'all. Check it out. Isn't it pretty? Look at that. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to sit it in our hand this way. Check that out. Boom. We're going to take a little bit of this spray. Check this out. Boom. And we're going to spray the top. All right. Can everybody see that? Nice, right? We're going to turn our clipper over and we're going to spray the other side. All right. Now, the key here is to make sure that we get this, <clears throat> this spray moving nice and evenly throughout the blade. So we're going to turn it on. I love that sound. And we're going to turn it off. And we're going to turn it on, and then we're going to turn it off. Now, what that does is it helps to circulate the, the, the product throughout the blades to make sure that even on the insides of the blades, if there's anything in there, we're getting it, all right? Then we're going to wipe off the excess, all right? So step number one, sanitize. Sanitation is not an option. It is a must. Step number two, <clears throat> we're going to take our clipper oil, y'all, all right? We're going to take our clipper oil. And we use a three drop system because again, you don't want to use too much oil on your tool, but you don't want to you lose, use too less. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off here in the center and we're going to put one dot. Boom. All right. Now we're going to turn our blade on the other side and right here, if you guys can see, this is called the steel blade and this is the moving blade. We're going to put one dot of oil right there in between those two blades. And then we're going to do it again on the other side. All right. Nice and easy. Okay, so what are we gonna do, people? We're gonna turn it on, and we're gonna turn it off, and we're gonna turn it on, and we're gonna turn it off, all right? So what that does, again, it helps to circulate the clipper oil all through the blades to make sure that we keep consistent blade speed, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe off that excess because we don't want oil dripping down our client's face because that's not cool, all right? And as you guys can see, with my with my mannequin it has a ton of different hair so what we want to do first is we want to take off and remove the bulk all right so what we're going to do is with our clipper in the closed position all right so this is closed closed meaning that the steel blade and the moving blade are very very close together now with this lever that's on the side if i push this lever down it opens the blade all right so closed open all right now with the blade open it's not going to take off as much hair so what we want to do is we want to close our blade down we want to we want to close our blade down and again we want to make sure that we are holding our tool the correct way all right so we got four fingers right four fingers and a thumb four fingers and a thumb we want to put four fingers across the back of our clipper like such all right, and notice right up in here, it's a nice little groove so we can keep our index finger there. That way we can have a lot more control of the clipper. Right here, right in the center where the motor is, is where I keep my thumb. That keeps everything nice in place. It keeps it, keeps it real, real um, tight inside my hand. But also what it does, it gives me the option to make a C cutting motion, okay? So with my fingers here, I can actually rock and manipulate my blade the proper way to make sure that if I'm doing any fading or if I'm doing any blending, it gives me that nice C cutting motion that automatically gives us graduation, all right? Now, if I'm working on the side of the head, this is the actual hand position that I'll be using to remove the bulk, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna cut our tool on. We're gonna grab us a nice comb because everybody should always keep a comb in their hand and we're gonna take some of this bulk out, all right? Make sure that the blade is in the closed position and we're just gonna debulk. Now you can tell that this clipper itself is very, very, it's a very, very powerful tool, okay? It can cut through wet hair. It can cut through dry hair. It can cut through curls. It can cut through swirls. It can cut through cowlicks. It kind of sound like a, a Billy Mays commercial, right? But what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking some of this bulk off of the hair. And as you guys can see, the hair is just flying right on off. Not a lot of work at all. All right, now, and you see in my hand, I'm still using my C cutting motion even though I'm just reducing the bulk in this area. I'm bringing it here and out. Here and out. Okay? Making a nice little C cutting motion here. 
I'm going to work my way around the front as well. Reduce some of that bulk so we can see this guy's eyes. And the beautiful thing about this particular clipper, uh, especially for this particular style, is that it doesn't have a cord. It's cordless, all right? Lithium ion battery gives you a great running time. Um, I've actually used this particular clipper in a lot of situations and use it all day. And I'm talking about cutting anywhere between 10 to 15 heads a day, um, just making sure that um, I have great maximum power from a great maximum tool. So we're gonna reduce this bulk here. All right, and as you guys can see, look at how nice that shape is so far, okay? And for time's sake, we're gonna focus on one side. I will post the finish, um, the finished look on my Instagram page, and I'll share that information with you guys a little bit, um, a little bit later. So, when I'm teaching haircuts, uh, whether it be on the road or with my own students, I like to equate haircuts to a house. All right. I know it sounds a little weird, but you you you'd be surprised. I actually majored in early childhood education, so I kind of break everything down to where it's fun and it's it's uh it's it's in small chunks, so you can so you can chew it up and and get fulfilled like that. All right. So first thing we're gonna do, um, we took off our bulk, and we have our cordless tool. We're gonna put a guard on our clipper. All right. This is the number one number one guard. Okay. Now. The cool thing is that the snap-on attachment is very, very secure, so you don't get uh, a stay-at-home haircut or give someone a stay-at-home haircut when you're doing it. So anytime that you're putting your guard on top of your blade, you want to make sure that the teeth are locked in there nice and tight first, and then we're just going to press down on the back. Everybody heard that click? Nice snap, okay? Now, <clears throat> this particular guard is a zero. It cuts the hair at 1 16th of an inch. The only way to get the true length of this guard is if the blade is in the closed position. Remember earlier we talked open and close. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make my first panel here. Again, we're making a haircut house. So we start off with the foundation. Then we work on our walls. Then we work on our roof. And then with our trimmer, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna add, some, add the trim, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna make sure that my hand is in the proper position. I'm gonna make a C cutting motion, all right? A C cutting motion. So, turn my model here. And I'm gonna keep this blade flat against his head. I'm gonna take this bulk out. And I'm gonna start with, with it flat against his head and I'm gonna make that C cutting motion. And I'm gonna go around, all around the air, the ear. All right, let me comb off that excess so you guys can see. All right, come back to the nape of the neck. Take that bulk out. Now here's a cool little tip. Sometimes when you're cutting longer lengths of hair and you're trying to get around the ear, you want to use the tip of the blade as if it were a shear so you can actually carve out the shape that you want. So basically what I'll do is I can take my mannequin here, and I'm just gonna turn my blade to the side and etch nicely around the ear. Now I'm gonna come back from this side to make sure that the hair that I missed that may be on the top, I actually got off. All right? So again, this is going to be panel number one. For any students that may be watching, um, and, and this is this could be a, a nice little tip for professionals too, plan your work and work your plan. That's super, super important, all right? You wanna make sure that when you have a client that sits in your chair, you look at the hair, you already have a vision for exactly what how you want it to look and what your plan of execution is gonna be so that you can make sure that this is a great, great haircut, all right? So, panel number one, again, still making our C cutting motion. Going back around the ear, checking my work. Going all the way to the nape of the neck. And then stop, all right? Now, I'm gonna take my guard off here. And 
The second thing that I'm going to do, and if you guys don't have one, please make sure that you invest in one, is a nice, clean clipper brush. I can't tell you guys how many times I've been to a barber shop and I see toothbrushes, I see hair brushes, I see color brushes, I see all kinds of different things sitting on people's station. Listen, let's do this together, people, all right? Cut it out. All right, we're professionals or we're future professionals. Let's make sure we got the proper tools that we need. Cut it out. If you got a toothbrush at your station, listen, message me, message Marlo. We'll make sure you get exactly what you need. All right, so I'm gonna take off the excess here. Get that hair off of there so I can see exactly what is going on. All right, so <clears throat> on our fade, we started off with our zero guard. All right, and now, we're gonna to go to our number one guard, okay? So I wanted to make it kind of easy for everybody. And again, each one of these guards is set up at a different length. So if you overthinking how exactly I need to do a fade and my fade doesn't look like the ones on Instagram, don't worry about that. It's gonna be fine. If you use these techniques, it doesn't matter if it's Afro textured hair, if it's straight hair, it does not matter. Remember, hair is just hair. Now, again, our one guard, it cuts the hair at one eighth of an inch. Four fingers across the back. We're gonna still make that C cutting motion. All right, so this is gonna be panel number two. I'm gonna bring that up. Plan our work and work our plan. Again, my name is Roderick Samuels. For people who are just joining in, I hope that you guys are having uh, a great day. Uh, I hope that um, if your salons or shops are still closed, we get to open up real soon. And, uh, and have another go at this. Uh, I can honestly say uh, for myself that it has definitely been um, an amazing and kind of crazy experience, only that uh, we've been doing online classes for our students and using a lot of mannequins and stuff. So uh, it all works out in the end. So panel number two, as you guys can see, let me remove this hair. So we got two panels out right now. Panel number one here, and then panel number two I'm going to use the side of my blade to get that hair out that I missed. And I'm going to use the tip of my blade again to get around the ears, nice and tight as I possibly can. All right. I have a question here. Yes. Could you have taken out, could you have taken more bulk out before starting panels? Yes. Uh, depending on what type of hairstyle you're going with, you could completely reduce the bulk over the entire section of the head if that's what you like. Uh, because of the fact that we're in a learning environment, I wanted to show a little bit more of the removal of the hair and also to kind of show you guys exactly what steps you need to take uh, to create nice even graduation and get that fade the way you want to. Thank you so much for your question. All right, um, the other thing that I, uh, that I forgot to tell you guys is that these amazing guards actually come along with this particular tool. So again, um, you don't have to you know, invest too much money and, uh, and buying new tools or a tool for fading or a tool for this, that, and the third. You get you one solid tool, something that looks good, something that works well, and, and you can do all the rest, all right? So panel number one, we started with a zero. Panel number two, we went with the one. Panel number three is a half, okay? I'm sorry, it's a one half. <laughs> so I'm gonna lock that on. Again, heard the click. Now, as we get closer up to the parietal ridge, you'll notice that I'm starting to rock that hair out a little bit more because I don't wanna compromise the integrity of the top section. Are you posting it to your personal Instagram, Roderick I Samuels? I will. Okay. All right, so again, we bring it out and we're rocking everything out now. So from the panel we started up until the point that we are right now, when I'm getting towards that parietal ridge, I'm rocking everything out. Okay? Just removing all that hair. And again, these particular clippers are good for wet hair, they're good for dry hair, they're good for straight hair, they're good for curly hair, coily hair, it really doesn't matter. The key is making sure that you keep that blade nice and flat as you go and work through your panels. 
Someone just asked, approximately how high are you clippering up with each panel section? You know what, that's a great question. So for this particular look, I'm going with what I like to call a medium fade. Uh, for all of us who have three fingers out there, this is a really cool way that you can actually determine where you want or how you want that fade to look and to feel. So if I wanted a low fade, I would remove these two fingers and that's where I would, that's where I would start it. If I wanted a mid fade, I would remove my middle finger and that's where I would start it. A high fade, again, where my index finger is, that's where I would start it. So you can use your fingers. You can also use your comb as well. And I teach this trick to my students. And this is what I like to just call a roll of the comb. So I take the comb and I sit it right at the top of the client's ear. Okay, that would be panel one. Now, if I hold that comb firmly and I roll that comb, that would be panel number two. And I can do it again and that would be panel number three. All right, so two different ideas of how to create um, different looks and different, uh, different fades, all based on either your fingers or the placement of the comb, okay? And for those of you who are out there, this is my wife. She's actually fielding questions. Uh, her name is Lauren Mosher. She's uh, a North American Hairstyling Award uh, finalist and also a winner. Um, not only because she's my wife, she's brilliant and all of that other stuff. And, Aww. you know, it's Aww. all good. Oh, we're not doing this. This is, for, this is for class. This is for class. <laughs> all right. So, again, working my way up. Bringing that fade up. And, again, as I'm combing through, I'm actually going back through those panels to make sure that if there was any hair that was left, I'm picking that up with my clippers. Okay? And rocking everything out. Okay, so we got our three panel fade in. We see that our hair is actually starting to take shape. So now I want to show you guys a little freehand shaping, okay? So freehand shaping is when you don't use a guard or uh, any type of comb attachment and the clipper blade is all going to be guided by your hand. Okay, so before you start this, you want to make sure that if you're a little nervous or you might suffer from a little, from, from a little nerv nervousness or something like that, always check your hand and make sure this nice and straight, all right, because you don't want to give somebody an old lord haircut. If you don't know what that is, uh, you ever been cutting somebody's hair and sneeze or miss and the only thing you can say is, oh lord, you do not want that to happen, all right? So, moving right along, what we're going to do is to kind of give this some more shape we're going to put our blade in the closed position, and I'm gonna move it this way so we can actually see. I'm gonna move this blade in the closed position, and I'm going to make this very, very flat and very, very square, all right? Now, the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna drive my car with two hands. I wanna make sure I keep it nice and steady. I wanna make sure that I have ultimate control over my clipper, all right? So, I'm gonna turn it back on. And I'm just going to go directly up as if I were cutting a flat top. And I'm going to remove that hair. Now, with the blade in the closed position, what's happening is that the hair is actually feeding into the blade super, super fast. So instead of pushing the hair in a different direction, what it's actually doing is it's cutting it as soon as it meets the still blade. All right, and we can see exactly how that turned out. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that I have everything nice and smooth, notice how the blade is facing towards me. The blade is not facing towards the client because again, I don't wanna poke the client, I don't wanna stab the client, and I don't want the client to be upset if I leave a divot in their hair. So, I'm gonna hold it from the side. Notice my hand position change. I still have two fingers across the back that gives me nice stability but that thumb placement is key, all right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna keep it nice and flat, and I'm gonna go right across it. Keeping everything nice and line, and building that shape. All right, now, as you guys can see, we got our three panels in. <coughs> Everything is nice and smooth and combed out. Again, I'm gonna get this thing all nice and finished up and I'm gonna post it up for you guys, the finished look uh, on, our, on my Instagram page. And I'll also share it with Marlo too so that they can show you guys. So we got our foundation. We got our walls up. 
Now you need to focus on the roof. So anytime that you're shaping longer, te longer textured hair like this, we're gonna, we're gonna actually take our, um, our traditional way of holding the clippers and we're gonna do it opposite. Okay, so here, when we first started working around the sides, I held it with four fingers across the back, one thumb here, and we made our C-cutting motion this way. Now, when we're shaping up the top, we're actually going to take our fingers, watch this, boop, 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 reverse, and hold it this way. So, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start right here at the top, and if you guys notice, look at how nice and flat that blade is. This is gonna make sure that anytime that I actually go through the hair, it's gonna make it nice and level and nice and even, all right? So I'm gonna turn it on here, and I'm gonna make my first cut. Keeping my hand nice and steady, nice and flat, removing the bulk, and building that shape. So one of, the, one of the popular haircuts that has come back and it's been modified greatly several times over is the flat top, all right? And if you see a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of guys uh, with afro textured hair that's wearing like the twist with the fade, uh, it actually, the entire hairstyle starts with this cut. So I'm gonna go back through it again. Make sure it's nice and flat, nice and even. Okay. Changing my grip again so I can make sure that the little loose hairs that may have fell to the side are now gone. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Could you go from, I'm, I'm assuming she meant to say, could you go from front to back? Yeah, absolutely. So the key for going front to back, I'm right-handed, all right? So with my right hand, I like to come in a motion that's really, really natural for me. Now, if I'm cutting with my left hand, because you have to cut with your left hand, <laughs> I think every professional should be ambidextrous, I could still go from this side. Can they, can they see, sir? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. from, from this side, from the front to the back. And I can also do it with my right hand too. And I'll do it with my right hand now, just so everybody can actually get a look. <clears throat> Would you also do this in that manner on fine hair? So with fine hair, it's a little bit different. Uh, um, only because with, with fine hair, it doesn't have that texture build. So I would probably use some type of pomade or, or some type of real strong, something that's real, real tacky to, to give it some lift. I'd use my blow dryer, blow it up, get it real, real nice and tight. And to create a shape like this, I would actually use a comb, okay, for fine, for fine hair. Um, and I'll show you guys this too, because that'll be part two of, of my lesson today. So for fine hair, I would take my comb here, and I would lift the hair up, take my comb, I'm sorry, take my clipper, and run it flat against my comb to give it that real, real nice square shape. Okay? But we will get to that, get to that in a sec. So, coming back through, I'm gonna take off a little bit of this ball so everybody can see. It's very editorial right now. Yeah, it is kind of editorial. Um, <laughs> I'm practicing. I would, I would just cut just that half and yeah. call it a style. I'm practicing for Naha, y'all. <laughs> so if y'all see this in an entry, just know it was mine first. Okay? All right. So the last thing I want to show you guys um, in this particular, uh, for this particular model is we did exactly everything that we said that we were gonna do. We built us a haircut house where we started with the foundation. We got our walls up. We did our roof. Now it's time to add the trim. So anytime that you're using the trimmer, and this is the Andis Slimline Pro. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys something if you don't already know. This is the tool that they're giving away today. So if you haven't entered already, please make sure that you do. All right. This is a different version of this one, but this one is really, really cool. It's a new Andis Nation one. All right. So 
What we're going to do is, if everybody can see real closely, if you notice the way that I have my hand position, I always have this little finger out right here. I want to make sure that anytime I'm edging and lining, I always make sure that the stool blade and the moving blade hit the hair at the exact same time. All right. So I'm also going to change my comb. When you're dealing in with, with lighter hair, or smaller pieces of hair, you want to use more of a taper comb so that you can give that hair the direction that you want to get the, the cut that you want. So I'm going to hold my tool just like this, keep my thumb across the back, four fingers on the front this time, and I'm going to tap lightly, okay? So anytime you're using a trimmer, we're going to start, always start in the center. That's going to be our guide, all right? Now, notice my finger. I'm going to use this finger as a brace so I can place it against my client's forehead just like this and now it's very nice and steady so I can make a nice straight line anytime that I go through. Now, one of the biggest things, especially in the barber industry, when you're edging and lining and you, you're creating hard lines is to not push the hairline back. All right. We don't want people walking around looking like me. All right. As you guys can see today, um, this is the quarantine haircut. All right. I got my sunroof up. You see it? All right. So again, I'm gonna start right here in the center and I'm gonna work my way to the point. Let's turn my trimmer on. I'm gonna set my finger right there on the forehead and I'm gonna tap lightly. Ooh, hear that? Now, what I'm doing is I'm staying right on the client's natural hairline. By placing this finger on the head, it gives me a lot more stability and it's almost like haircut insurance because now I don't have to worry about how hard I'm pushing down, or if the line is going to be straight. If you start in the center and work your way around, everything will be just fine. All right, now, keep in mind that the blade is also flat, and it's a straight line. So when you're lining and when you're edging, just take the tip of the blade, keep your finger here, and tap lightly. Let the blade do the work. I know a lot of people, they try to force it and they'll jam it into the client's skin. And you ever seen your client in the chair and they doing one of these numbers? He's kind of doing one of these, okay? They're not dancing to the music, I promise you. Nine times out of 10, that blade is so sharp against their skin, it's cutting them. So be very, very mindful of that. Place the blade here, tap lightly. All right, now, a lot of, a lot of people there get confused as to where the point should be. If you check out Take your comb and look at the corner of your client's eye. Nine times out of ten, the corner of the eye is going to show you exactly where that point should be. So your comb is not just for combing. It can also be used to measure and also to show you exactly uh, the density of the hair. Just a number of different things. So use your comb as the tool that it should be. So when we come in on this side, you'll notice I keep my trimmer on. And now what I'm doing, I'm, rock, I'm rolling my wrist. Here's a tip, guys. Never cut what you can't see. I know a lot of people who like to use their trimmers this way. Can I see the hair? No, so the, the opportunity for me to make a mistake is greater because I'm <laughs> cutting an area that I can't see. So I'm gonna take my comb, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over direct the hair. I wanna get it out of its natural fall, so that way when my client gets home and they shampoos his hair, and it'll the, the lining and the edging will all look still perfect. Okay, so I'm going to roll my wrist and where my line ended here is where I'm going to start. So again, tapping lightly. Now I'm going to roll my wrist this way and edge. All right, coming down to the sideburn, same thing. Over direct the hair, start from the bottom and work my way up. The reason I'm starting from the bottom is because I want the hair that I over-directed to fall directly into the cutting blade, okay? So I'm just gonna tap lightly here. Now, look at the ears. I still got some hair around the ears. I'm gonna take the tip of the blade as if it were a pencil and I'm going to etch right around the ear to get that loose hair off. And I'm gonna come Counterclockwise, to clean the rest of that up, okay? So, just a little quick recap. Haircut house, foundation, walls, 
roof trim. All right, everybody got that? All right, now listen, if you have more questions, put them in the comments. We may not be able to get to all the questions today, but we will get to them. I will make sure that I answer them perfectly, all right? And I'll show you guys the finished look on this one, all right? Now, the last technique that I want to show you guys, <coughs> you can actually use on women as well as men, and it's called backhand cutting, okay? So, I just want to show you guys just a little, just a little tip, a little trick right here. Okay, I'm gonna comb this hair back through. And I'm just gonna make one little small section. Let me grab another comb. I'm gonna take one small section here. Get my parting together. We've been working on parting with our students every day. And let me tell y'all something. This is the most tedious thing <laughs> to teach out of everything, all right? so. We got a small single part right here, and my wife actually used this to cut pixies, long layers. She layered hair because she does bobs with them and everything. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our clipper, and I'm right-handed, so we're going to take my clipper and we're going to put it in the back of my right hand. Can everybody see that? Now, I'm going to take my comb, and I'm going to place my comb right in between my index finger and my middle finger and grab it together. So just like this, okay? Now, if I were using shears, I would pull the section up, I would transfer my shear, and then I would cut. With this particular technique, I can actually do both things at one time. So, again, clipper in the back of the hand, holding the comb with my index and my middle finger, and I'm gonna grab it tightly, and I'm gonna pull a small section here. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it up, lay the blade flat against my fingers, and I'm gonna cut. That's gonna be my guide, okay? Let me hold this real quick, and I'm gonna show you guys from this angle as well. I'm gonna pull the hair up, make sure it's nice and taut, place the blade on my fingers, and cut across. Now, this is my guide. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that, and I'm gonna pull up on the next section. Can everybody see my guide? See where I stop and cut. I'm gonna do it again as I'm working my way to the crown, pulling everything up this way and across. All right, now let's say that I wanna add some texture to a haircut. I can do the same thing. What technique would we normally use for texturizing? We would use point cutting, right? So. If I needed a point cut, what I would do is I'd bring that section back up, and depending on how much texture that I wanted to add, that's exactly how I'm going to hold it, all right? And I'm just going to take my blade, and I'm going to point cut the hair, all right? I can take another section, and I'm just going to point cut the hair. And again, I'm not jamming the clipper into my fingers. I'm just breaking up that texture so it'll be a lot fuller, all right? Let's say that I'm working on the back section. You can use it for this too. So now I got my guide up here. I know exactly how long I need to go. I'm gonna roll my comb to the side, find my guide here. And let's say I just wanted to add a little bit more texture along the back. I could take my clipper blade and cut that hair. And it gives me a lot more texture. And the cool thing is, that, let's say I wanted to cut it first and then come back through and texturize. I could do that as well. So, also, look for the finished look with this model as well. Um, I think my time is up, guys. I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek into the new world of Andis. Make sure you check out the new Andis Nation tools on Marlow Beauty. Uh, it's website, also the Anda Slimline Pro. Check this out, nice, lightweight, again, cordless, it's awesome. Um, and also, make sure you get all your sanitation, uh, things you need to reopen. Listen, prepare now, because we never know exactly when they're gonna reopen them, but listen, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, all right? Again, my name is Roderick Samuels, Anda's educator. You can catch me on Instagram, at Roderick Samuels, 
Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm all over the place. So uh, again, thank you guys so much for your time. Stay blessed. And remember, it takes a village. All right. We love you guys. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.